Women have power, they have intelligence that we aren't using because, after all, there's nothing worse than a nerdy man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of these things and these myths and a lot of it's been, you know, perpetuated through the media, through movies, through culture, through Wait a music. minute, a lot of it's been perpetuated through religion. And through religion, yeah. Come on, we don't, yeah, through we, religion. We don't want to admit that perhaps, perhaps what we're dealing with is too many years of a religion based on the superiority of that white male that wasn't white. not a teacher. Teachers dispense facts and figures in order to get kids ready for the end of your testing and for more of the same. That's not what I do. I leave people out of ignorance, people of all ages. So be careful about how you pronounce that word. Okay. Words have power and you should use them properly and carefully and you should pronounce them correctly. Okay. And we've had lots of presidents who said education. W. Constantly said education. Well, Somebody needed to take him aside and say, W, the word is education. Now, perhaps Mr. Trump will see this and he will learn to say education too. Okay. It's not that hard. He learned to say reciprocal last summer, and I was amazed that he had learned to say it, and he said it over and over and over. He forgot to. Somebody forgot to tell him reciprocity, but see, that's five oh. syllables. He'd have had trouble with that. He can do reciprocal, that's only four, he's okay. How, how old is Trump? 70, 72 going on five. <laughs> he's a big baby. <laughs> oh, so it, it, well, that's the problem. He's a hurt person as well, you know. No, he's not a hurt person, he's a hurting person. Okay, he's a hurting person. He's a hurting person who is willing to hurt others. Yeah, he never really received the... Well, he never developed an adult, adult ego state. You have three ego states, child, parent, and adult. He goes from his child ego state to his parent ego state. He never gets into an adult ego state. You, when he says, you're fired, that's his parent ego state. When he's making fun of a disabled man, that's his child ego state. And if you've read the book, TA for Teens, or you know anything about transactional analysis, and you should if you're gonna be in this line of work, at least read TA for Teens. And there are lists of things that you say when you're in your child ego state, what you say when you're in your parent ego state, what you say in your adult ego state. And you listen to a person talking, you know immediately, Oh my God, I have to read. Look at that snow. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What are we going to talk about here? <laughs> so, <clears throat> sorry. I mean, it's kind of last minute, and I mean, I've been wanting to reach out to you and, and have an interview with you and just speak with you and sit with you for about a year now. Well, that's um, not very long. No, it's not. Well, okay, since I've been at this for 50 years. Yeah. And I was doing this before you were born, wasn't I? Yes, you were. Yes, yes. Oh. yes you were. That's rather depressing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. in a certain way yeah, that we're still talking about this and still having to deal with it and still people don't have... But, but now we don't even talk about it because no. now we, are, we have people running around saying we are in a post-racial society. No, we aren't in a post-racial society. If we were in a post-racial society, no one would have voted for a man who is openly racist, sexist, ageist, homophobic, and ethnocentric. Nobody, if we were in a post-racial society, would have allowed that to happen. The Republicans would have had more sense. They have no sense, obviously. And now they are all willing, and I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm an obviously totally independent because neither party wants my name attached to theirs. Yes. And I understand that. They don't want, nobody wants to say, <laughs> Jane Elliott's a member of our party. They won't even invite me to a party. And that's fine. I don't want to be seen as one of those. No. Because what they're doing in this country right now is insane. It makes no sense. And the Republicans should have talked to an alcoholic. Alcoholics say, Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is what the world calls insanity. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing now is totally unreal. All it's doing is forcing us to accept the myth of white male superiority. And it is a myth. And we have been myth-led long enough. It's time to get over it. Mm. What was your first question? You were going to ask a question and I interrupted My you. My first sorry. question was, what is your idea about sharing power? You've mentioned that in a few um, 
interviews that you've had with previous people in the past, but you mentioned the p importance of sharing power and what does that mean to you? That means if you're going to have this power, you're going to have to take the responsibility for what happens as a result of how you use it. When white males begin to re realize that they are going to be held responsible for everything that's happening in this country where they have the majority of the power, they will change their behaviors because they do not want to be held responsible for what this country is going to become if we do not change, our, change who we allow to have power and how we use power and do it shortly. Within 30 years, white people will be a numerical minority in the United States of America. White males had better begin to realize that they're going to have to start sharing power with those who are other than white and other than male and other than stayed. And I don't use the word straight mm -hmm. because the opposite of straight is bent, misshapen, or crooked. My gay and lesbian, my LGBTQ friends are not mm -hmm. bent, misshapen, or crooked. Mm -hmm. Stayed makes more sense to me. So stayed males are going to have, stayed white males are going to have to start realizing that they're going to have to share power with those who are different from themselves if this country is to continue to be a democracy. Okay. You know, the, a democracy yeah. is about all the people. Yeah. It's about all the people. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have a boy in power now, and he's a boy grown tall. Make no mistake about this. The man who's, the person who's heading this country now is not a man. He's a boy grown tall. He is being directed by somebody who says, we have to deconstruct this government. We do not have to deconstruct this government. People have no idea what it will be like if we deconstruct this government and allow this to become an oligarchy yeah, or an aristocracy or what they have in Saudi Arabia. I've been to Saudi Arabia three times. I do not want to live in the Sharia, under Sharia law. And what the evangelical Christians have in mind is exactly very, very similar to Sharia law. I do not want to live that way. And neither should any other woman, and neither should any man, yeah. if he or if he wants to relate to a female. And most of them do. Yeah, I believe and that's that okay, you true. don't have to want to relate, relate to a female, but the majority of males in this country want to have a relationship with a female. If you want to have a relationship with a female, you better change the way you feel about them and the way you are allowing them to, to have or not to have power. Well, we just saw that with Kavanaugh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that was a smack in the face. But, but the reason that was a smack in the face to me was totally different from the reason it was a smack in the face to you. It was a smack in the face to me because Orrin Hatch mm -hmm. and Chuck Grassley mm -hmm. were two of the major people who did a job on Anita Hill 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Those two fools are still there and still doing the same thing. What that says to me is those two white males didn't learn anything in 25 years except how to abuse a female. Yeah. Do you think that they want to learn? They think they know enough. Mm -hmm. You see, if you, if you believe in the superiority of white males, the fact that you're born white and a male automatically makes you superior to every other person on the face of the earth who isn't a white male. And why do you think it's so hard for people to understand, or do you, um, power? Like, why, why is it so hard for them to share power? Because they are afraid that if they share power, you will be, and this is, this is one of the major things that people say to me after I've done the exercise, or after I've given a speech, whatever I do, and when I'm on a bus and, I talk, and somebody recognizes me, that's one of the first things they say is, well, if those people get power, aren't they going to want to do to us what we've done to them? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're afraid of being treated badly in the future by people because of what you've done to them in the present, change the way you treat people in the present so that you won't have to worry about that in the future. I talked to a group in, oh Lord, where, it doesn't matter where. Every time I do a, a college or university now, I say to the, most of the times, I say to the group, well, every black person in this room who wants to get even with all white people, please raise your hand. Maybe one or two hands go up. And I say, now white folks, turn around and look. See, they don't know why I get even with you. Now, will, ev will every black person in this room who'd like to get even with one or two white people raise your hand? Every hand goes up, mm -hmm. and immediately, and they all start to laugh. Mm -hmm. And whites look around like, oh, I say, no. Nah. If you don't want to be one of those one, of one yeah. or two, change the way you behave in the present so that they will have a better feeling about you in the future. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. See, to me, that makes mm -hmm. perfectly good sense. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. What we do in the present creates the future. Mm -hmm. We could learn from the past. We could learn how not to behave in the past because of what we know happened in the past. We can change the present in order to 
constructive future. Mm -hmm. We could have a very good future mm -hmm. if we were willing to treat people not as we want to be treated. No, 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 no. See, I don't believe in the golden rule either. Okay. The golden rule came out of Chinese philosophy, and in Chinese philosophy it said, do unto others as others would have you do unto them. Mm -hmm. Treat others the way they want to be treated. Now, I'm sure that you don't want to be treated the way I want to be treated. No. no, when you get on an airplane, if you have a piece of luggage in your hand, you can put it up on the rack. Mm -hmm. No problem. <laughs> if I say to you, can I help you with that, darling? You'll say, I can do this myself. <laughs> and you will. Yes. But when I get on an airplane, if I have a piece of luggage in my hand that has to go in the overhead rack, if some young person says to me, can I help you with that, ma'am? I would rather they wouldn't say ma'am, but I say, oh, absolutely. I'd appreciate that a lot. We don't want to be treated the same way, you and I. Mm -hmm. I know that no male wants to be treated the way I want to be treated. I didn't really learn that until my daughter married a Saudi Arabian. And I went to Saudi Arabia and met her mother-in-law. And I knew instantly, because I had read the Arabs, and I'd rather, you know, a lot of stuff. And I knew that she didn't want to be treated the way I wanted to be treated. So I had to treat her the way she wanted to be treated. Now, in order to find out how someone wants to be treated, you have to ask them, you have to listen to the answer, and if what they ask you to do is neither illegal, indecent, or immoral, do it. Mm -hmm. That, but this means that we have to communicate with one another. I was on a, I was on a oh, talk show, ridiculous talk show, a couple weeks ago. And there was another white woman that they had brought in. She's a member of the group. And they brought her in because they wanted the white female attitude. Okay. And after she had said three words, I thought, oh, heaven said, help me, save me oh. from this. Anyway, she was just, she was absolutely astounded that she should ask somebody how they want to be treated. She didn't understand that at all. I was so disgusted by her quoting the golden rule because while she was quoting it, she wasn't treating the black woman who was the, the star of the show the way that black woman wanted to be treated. And that black woman was having to pretend that she appreciated that. When that white woman said to that black woman, who she is this, I, this woman is her boss. I feel that that's a major problem in our society today. Um, no, the major problem in our society today is ignorance. Okay. That is the major problem in our society today. It is that white woman had no she business. She didn't even know how that woman no, wanted it, to be treated. She didn't ask questions. She, said, she just came in with no, her arrogance and well, ignorance. Yeah, she said on just, camera, I just don't understand blacks. Oh. And I'm standing out in the hall watching this. Well, if you don't understand, if you don't understand something, wouldn't you want to find out or like figure out? Well, what? if you don't understand blacks and you're working in a, an all black in, in, in industry company, yeah. company, and you don't, under, don't understand yeah. blacks, the thing for you to do is don't ask them what's it like to be black. No. Uh uh uh. That's heard, a so I've heard <laughs> that. Oh, and I'm like, this is what I was talking about with Lamont today. We were talking about on the way up. It was like. I was just like, white people are just so awkward. They don't even know how, like, there's, there's, there's their own thing, and then, the, and then the upbringing of white culture, too, in the white culture, like, family is so, it's very um, non-emotional. And, and structured. Not, it's structured, it's very rigorous, it's very intellectual. No, it's not, not intellectual. intellectual. Oh, no, no, okay. no, it's not intellectual. Okay. It is very me-centered. Aha, ego Ego. Perhaps ego-centered, but more than more than that, it's all about us white folks. Aha. Uh -huh. We have a okay. right. There's a right way and the wrong way. In okay. other words, there's the white way and the wrong way. Ah. Ah, yes. That was in this book. I don't in remember seeing the that. The myth of race. I mean, not exactly that's in, what you but said, that's but in most, like that's in most if you of the decipher books that I read. information, it would say <laughs> that it was like the philosophers were saying, like uh, Immanuel Kant, Kant. Can't. Couldn't. Not. Can't. Couldn't. <laughs> he was saying that like all other people, non-whites, were immoral. Well, and you see, that's another thing. And we like, what class, is morality? Well, but we class people as <laughs> whites and non-whites, yeah. as if whites were the standard, and everybody that isn't white is non-white. When we're actually the minority. On the earth, we are the minority. Yes. And in 30 years, in the United States, we'll be the minority. But in fact, there isn't a white person on the face of the earth. You show me somebody <laughs> who is this color. <laughs> or this color. Or this color. <laughs> or, you, or this color. I can tell where your skin ends up and your shirt begins. That would be really scary, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even an albino, what they quote to be albino There's still people because are because of like, their blood yeah. vessel. You can, see, the whole thing is so... And actually, nobody's really 
black. Pretty close. Yeah. But oh, more like I'm blue. Sorry. Like. I'm sorry, but I've seen yeah. some I've seen some people who are am I right about that? Hey, you are right. Who are as black <laughs> as coal and, right. and gorgeous as they can possibly yeah. be. And yeah. if, and it's it's like Oh my God! And, you know, I used to say, and you leave this out of me. I used to say, "Oh, Mama, buy me one of those." And I don't, no, I don't say that anymore, obviously. But to be in the presence of someone who is as he or she is, yeah. and is absolutely refuses to accept the white male definition of that person, yeah. is such a good experience. Last week, I was with Minnie Jean. Uh, Minnie Jean Brown Tricky. Do you know who that is? You mentioned her. She's one of the. Talk. She's one of the um, Little Rock Nine. Little Rock Nine. Okay. Everybody has to hear Minnie Jean Brown Tricky and what she experienced there, what she has experienced since. And interestingly enough, they kicked her out of school probably because she dared to exceed their expectations. And she went to live with Kenneth Clark and his wife, Kenneth Clark, who did the black and white doll studies. Mm -hmm. What, how kind they were to Minnie Jean Brown Tricky when they kicked her out of school and she got to live with Kenneth Clark. I would give my eye teeth. I would give my eye teeth if I had had the opportunity to live with Kenneth Clark and his wife. What a remarkable pair. Oh my God, she was lucky. She was lucky. But see, white folks do things to punish someone. And in fact, what they have done is increase that person's power and that creases that crease person's knowledge and that person's base of knowledge. And and in Minnie Jean Brown Tricky's case, they increased her ability to communicate with people of all kinds mm -hmm. and to know a whole lot that the white teachers who kicked her out of school never learned. Unfortunate for them, right? But unfortunately, because we because we limit our experiences. We limit the people that we associate with, and therefore we limit our backgrounds, we limit our knowledge, we limit, we limit our humanness. And, but until we have taught every human being on the face of the earth that we're all 30th to 50th cousins, mm -hmm. and if, if you read the myth of race, you, there is no way you will ever again believe in the myth of race. You'll, every time somebody says something that has racist overtones, you'll say, wait a minute, do you realize, <laughs> do you realize that he and you our cousins, we are. Oh yeah, you are. Thirtieth to fiftieth cousins. How do you like me now? And they won't believe that until they have their DNA done. Mm -hmm. And if you have your DNA done, you will find out there is a percentage of your DNA that <laughs> comes from from a country in yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, when we all finally get around to admitting that there's only one race on the face of the earth, and it started with black females in sub-Saharan Africa, between three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand years ago, people are going to have to say, okay. The Bible is right when it talks about the family of man. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. It's, yeah. uh, that's, from, that's from a movie from yeah. uh, Wayne's World. But yeah. Well, until we get smart, we aren't worthy. No. We, one of the main differences between white people and people of other color groups is when white people come into a new environment, they immediately adjust the environment to fit their needs. Mm. When people of other color groups come into a new environment, they immediately adjust their needs to fit the environment. And you look at this country since we got here, we white folks, in less than 400 years, we have managed to destroy the water, the air, and the land in a vast, on vast and areas this, in this country. Yeah, the connection. I mean, the native people of this land knew the land. They spoke to the land. They, you know where they came from? They had, they were rooted to they, this land. You know where they came from? The native? They came from Africa. Yes. Just like everybody else, because yes. those those Africans, those black people, mm -hmm. moved away from the equator, and as they mm -hmm. moved farther and farther from the equator, their hair, their skin, and their eyes got lighter and lighter. They populated every landmass on the face of the earth was populated by somebody whose ancestors are black from Africa. My ancestors yeah. are black. I mean, they're finding so more people like in Cambodia and Asia, and that like you know, I've heard that even the like some of the f samurais in Japan were African, and that like yes, and there's a <laughs> but this history has been buried. Well, well, but you see, you can't talk about what you don't know. Yeah, and we've all learned the same ridiculous things. The same textbooks. But yeah, my history books didn't change in. Um, in middle school, it was all about, we focused mostly on the, the white men who dominated and the conquistadors mm -hmm. that 
mm-hmm. you know, overthrew these beautiful cultures and societies mm-hmm. who had it all figured out, mm-hmm. really were in tune with universal laws and spirit and land and had thriving communities and all the lived really actually in their means and never tried to it they, wasn't about power, it was about domination and they control. They didn't adjust the environment to fit their needs. There's a man and in this country who... They taught, people to, they taught people to be themselves, and that was cherished. Like, each person was born with an innate gift and purpose, and they were all respected. As long worked. as you belong to the same tribe. Yeah, as long as you... But I mean, that's yeah. what the tribal... <laughs> yeah. That was the tribe. Yeah, you know, the don't, tribal don't thought. Don't romanticize no. First Nations people. There was violence, and there was Absolutely, still and the, but their bloodshed. violence, they practiced war. They, more, they practice that skill okay. more than going out for the purpose of killing people or defeating a whole mess of people. Got they it. practice their fighting skills. Their craft, a big difference. Yeah. They practice their craft. They practice how to stay alive. That's not the reason we fight wars. They did it we just for wars. survival. Yeah, well, we fight wars for somebody else's natural resources. And, yeah. and we will fight a war for natural resources very shortly, unless, anyway. We have been doing that. that. Yeah. But there's a man, there's a black man in this country, and I don't know, don't know his name, but I wish I knew and I wish I'd meet him. He has taken pictures of Indian chiefs mm-hmm. and put them beside pictures of black chiefs from Africa. Okay. The two are so similar that it's, it's, it's like, Oh my Lord, why haven't we not recognized that before this? Why did we not see that? <laughs> but, but you see, we white people do that. We white people have turned God into an old white man with a long gray beard who looks like Charlton Heston playing Moses. And we've turned the baby Jesus into somebody that looks like a little Pillsbury Hollywood doughboy. Hollywood's great for that. He, yeah, but he looks like a little <laughs> Pillsbury doughboy. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Mary didn't have blonde hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. She was a uh, Jewess and lived in the Middle East. You don't see many Jewesses living in the Middle East today who are blonde haired, blue eyed, with pale skin. <laughs> no. This is ridiculous. Yeah. But but we have to we have to have a person that we pray to who looks like us. Imagine white people having to pray to a black Jesus. Uh huh. <laughs> now, if you go to a black church, you can have that experience. Yeah, I've been into a black church, yeah. and there's there's a black yeah. Jesus everywhere. There he is. There yeah. he is. Oh no, really? I don't know if he'll understand me. I think he will. I think he will.